Hi there. Today in, uh, in this episode of the uh, Z80 project I will be looking at the uh, 8255 uh, I.O. interface. Um, I, have a, I have been trying to get the uh, Hitachi LCD working directly on the bus. Uh, unfortunately we have absolutely no results at all so I thought I would just go the route and put the A255 on there since a lot of people have done that and, uh, and see what will happen. Uh, unfortunately there's not going to be too much uh, content in this episode. I, you know, I did intend to do more this weekend but in fact, the whole weekend I've been spent trying to get the LCD working and the whole of today was the A255. Um, which you will see in, uh, in this episode. So, without further ado, let's get on to it. Okay, I did experiment with trying to hook up a an LCD screen directly to the bus, but I've not been able to get that to work, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure why, but, you know, that's much how it is. It's pretty much directly to the... Uh, the data bus. Um, I will put some details on the screen of how I hooked it up, uh, probably a schematic, but <clears throat> I think today I'm going to uh, attempt to try and you know, take the LCD off this board for now and I'm going to put an 8255 on there for the So okay, I'm going to do that and I'll be back. Okay, what we have here is the uh, the program has notepad with the assembly language in it. Um, you, you may have noticed I've actually changed the code so now I'm actually using uh, TASM assembler. Uh, it's a bit of a pain really because I have to use DOSBox to uh, to run it. <laughs> this is actually... Um, I think it's... Uh, DOS 5 is running on there, uh, or the equivalent to DOS 5. Okay, uh, on with the code. Now, what we have here, I've got the reset vector set, and what I've told it to do is to load the, um, the value 80hex to, um, to IO port 03, which is the control, port, the control register of the 8255. Uh, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll bring up the schematic. As you can see here, the uh, it's hard to get it to uh, get it right. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Okay. Now this here is the I/O bus that I put on to the uh, the board. This here is the reset line, and now the eight two five five is an active high reset. So. I had to invert that, and uh, that appears to be fine. The chip select here is for, for um, the decoded I/O address zero zero, and the read and the write lines go there, A one and A zero, and then the whole data bus goes over, and that's the connections needed to go to the Z eighty. Now what we have here, port A seven, I have it going through an inverter then resistor to the LED. So basically this LED is hooked up in an active low configuration so you have to put zero in to turn it on and using an inverter so basically you put a one in and we get LED lit which is good and uh, basically I'm not 100% certain if the uh, the 8255 can drive the LED directly so I didn't want to chance it, and since we're already using a, um, a hex inverter, might as well use it. These are the spare chips here. Um, I haven't indicated it here, but these are actually the inputs are actually grounded. So let's uh, let's go back to the code. <coughs> okay. So that sets up that port B, well actually it sets everything up will be output in uh, in mode 0 which is a basic input output mode 
Um, you'd really need to uh, read the 8255 data sheet to get a grasp of how all that works. Um, I'll have to read over it again. But anyway, uh, so yeah, once it resets, it's been told, we then jump to the start condition, which is over here. And then, basically, we're, um, we're sending the value 00, 00 to port 01 which is the port B register on the 8255 so we're turning off, I think off then we're doing a long delay which is just calls crap load of these delays I haven't worked out how, what the you know what the delay is yet but <coughs> once I get it all stable I'll figure out that and then basically it turns on all the port B then turns it off again and then loops around. And that should cause the flashing. Now, see I made it a mid delay here and I've basically done the same thing as here on the NMI but with mid delay so it should have been a faster one but I'm... Um, I don't seem to be getting much luck with the NMI button right now either. I think it's the same issue as the reset. I think it's just too noisy. So I will... Uh, We'll definitely have to look into that. Uh, yeah, so I think that will uh, will do for now, and, uh, and I'll get you onto the hardware and uh, and show you it running. Okay, I've been working on uh, getting eight two five five to work on the expansion port, um, but I. I've been, you know, running for a bit of difficulty. But I think I'm still getting quite a lot of noise on the uh, on the boards. Um, now, as you can see, the the LEDs flashing. That's actually on port B, uh, bit seven, and that should be an even on-off cycle. Uh, so the code basically states the delay. I haven't calculated exactly how long the delay is supposed to be. But it's uh, it's somewhat erratic, which is quite annoying. <coughs> it's a, it does go stable and gets unstable, which which is not good. Um, I'm assuming these are the culprit in the middle here. Though I did have to make a modification. The second from top line, I had to change it from a, uh, a decoded IO output to a res the reset line. Because this needs to be uh, reset. And of course, it needs to be inverted, so. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm also using the inverter to drive the LED. So it's, it's not a current issue with the, uh, the chip. That's causing this. Like when I put my finger there, it does actually act weird. I gotta go over all the joints again just to make sure. And um, yeah, I've been at this all day trying to get it up and running. Made quite a few silly mistakes, like I um, forgot to put a couple of wires here. At one point, I actually had the A255 in backwards, so that's possibly an issue with that. I've quite hurt it. I will. Uh, I'll try a fresh one in there a minute. Um, yeah, the, uh, the code seems to be fine, except it's running erratic. Okay, I've uh, I replaced the. Uh, a255 but uh, it does seem I don't know, it doesn't seem that stable. As you can see that's not that's not correct. That's supposed to be a fifty percent duty cycle on there. Be 
said about the moon. Yeah, that's just going crazy. But it's not a complete failure. Because right now it's actually showing me the. I'm actually doing some I.O. work on here. I haven't done as much with the Z80 stuff as I wanted to this weekend. Fortunately, um, uh, I was struggling a bit with the LCD stuff to get on there, and, and struggling all day today with the uh, the 8255. I'm hoping to find some time to, um, to redesign the board and maybe get it more fabricated. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm I'm confident that the design is starting to work out a bit. I think I just have to. Uh, Issues, uh, issue, resolve some noise issues and uh, tidy up the design a bit. It, it does appear to work, but I think the reset line needs some filtering on it, which I have to work on. And um, but I am happy that the A two five five is actually doing something. Has been told, rather than just sitting there saying nope. So. It, it does show me it does work, but I think the I think the Z80 is constantly resetting or being unstable. I don't think it's the A255 that's the issue in this point here. Um, but yeah, so the next video will be uh, will be to do with the reset line, the uh, cleanup, I suppose, and and then we can move on to doing other things. Uh, Especially if now we've got the I.O. working. I may, after that, move on to getting the LCD and a keypad working on the 8255. But that's only once we got the reset line cleaned up. Uh, yeah, sorry this one's a bit of a short one, but uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.